What I naturally did was I just gravitated towards the ways of building the business that I knew and that I loved, and that was connecting with people in real life and sharing my passion with them. And so always from the beginning, Pure Sport was something that was, yes, these supplements to me were, were game changers and the science and the evidence was showing that, but they were part of a lifestyle. They weren't a one-stop shop. And for me, these products were designed to help optimize like an active lifestyle. So what better way to do that than to build a community around an active lifestyle? Hey guys, my name is Grayson Hart, uh, founder at Pure Sport. Uh, Pure Sport is here to provide the world the most tested, trusted, and effective mushroom, CBD, and nootropic products to optimize people's lifestyles. Growing up in New Zealand, uh, I've got amazing memories. A uh, big part of our culture was rugby. Uh, that was a game that I loved, my family loved. It was a bond that I shared with my dad. Um, some of my earliest memories, running around, kicking a rugby ball. Um, and yeah, I wasn't up to too much in school, uh, sort of just mucking around with my friends, getting into trouble, not really paying much attention. Uh, but the one place that I felt a sense of belonging and that I felt like free and at home was uh, on the rugby field. And I remember in my last year of school, when it was like, oh, the real world's coming, what am I gonna do? I wanted to try to like make something better of my life than you know, the circumstances and the, the life that I was raised with. And, I remember thinking very clearly, I was like, I want to become a professional rugby player and I just put all my energy and every ounce of like my passion and drive to, you know, becoming a rugby player and I achieved that. I uh, got my first contract at the age of 19 um, and yeah, that, that sort of set me on my path, that was my career. Um, ended up signing a contract eventually uh, at the age of 24 to come over here to the UK. Picked up plenty of injuries along the way. Um, managed to really stuff my knee up. I've got what they call a degenerative knee, so no cartilage in the knee. Um, lots of pain, lots of inflammation, lots of swelling. Uh, that led me to a life of uh, reliance on painkillers as a rugby player, up to eight a day uh, at the worst times. Uh, and these were strong opioid-based painkillers. And that was the kind of level of reliance I was at to continue playing and training um, with the pain I was in. Um, and there was just one day that I just woke up and realised I was so unhealthy. I didn't feel like the same person, my mood, my energy levels, um, just life that felt like hazy and that had become my new normal. And I was so grateful that I woke up and realised that and that kind of made me shift my perspective on how I was looking to look after my body. Um, and it made me realise kind of the world that we live in is one of leading us towards quick fixes, you know, um, pharmaceuticals um, that mask issues and mask pain and actually are really unhealthy. They don't treat the source or there's not a solution. Um, or And yeah, that, that's what opened me up to discovering the world of um, nature really and how there's these unbelievable resources that can work in synergy with our body that are actually healthy for us, that can relieve pain. Um, inflammation, you know, help with energy levels, sleep quality, um, cognitive function and I was just mind blown and fascinated and that's what led me into a deep dive into wanting to understand more and how I could empower myself to optimize my body naturally and that's what led me on my journey to Pure Sport and Pure Sport arose because I started utilizing these products myself. Um, the issue was none of these products at the time uh, were certified for a drug test athlete and we're under contract, you're only allowed to take certified for sport um, supplements or products. But I sort of was at the point where I was on so many painkillers, I, I, I just made my own decision, I did my own due diligence. I knew there was certain levels of risk involved but I, I wanted to be a healthy human being over someone just full of, you know, these horrible painkillers every single day, day after day. And eventually my club sort of said, hey, like you're not allowed to take those when they found out I was taking them. Um, and I remember I was so frustrated and so upset by that. But a couple of weeks later I had like, I still remember it vividly, like, like a light bulb moment. I was sitting in a cafe and I was just like, I'm gonna solve this issue for myself. I'm gonna find a way to create the world's first 
fully certified for drug tester athletes range of these types of products that had never been done before. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had so much like drive and passion and belief in that, that vision. Um, and I sort of just set off on my path to figure it out. And yeah, I think that kind of ignorance was bliss and that, that was all around that passion. And um, that's what brought Pure Sport to life. And yeah, we launched as the world's first. And my view was if I could provide the solution to my fellow professional athlete, People in this world look to athletes as you know, leaders in how they optimize performance and look after their bodies, which is obviously their number one tool to perform. And I wanted to utilize that world of sport and the trust because you know, if drug tested drug, drug athletes can obviously only take things that are clean and certified and also not like influencers, they take things that truly work to enhance their health and performance. I wanted to use that platform to inspire the wider world to kind of fast forward this knowledge and this trust towards the power of nature and what it can do for our bodies and to get away from this mindset of like quick fixes and you know ph pharmaceuticals that don't really treat the source. Once I'd started calling all these people and I realised you know, this was a possibility, um, I had to convince my wife it was a good idea and so all of this was bootstrapped like this came out of our savings and so I had to pitch it to her and um, she was sort of like wow you're crazy but you're kind of that's the kind of dude that I know that I married so like if you believe in it like I believe in it too so I'm always grateful to her for believing in it because um, it wouldn't have ever come to life if she was like nah man because like, we were trying to save up for our first home together and you know we'd work really hard to do that but she kind of was like nah you can do it let's go. Um, and then from there, so we only had a very limited pot of capital. So I, I started with the key two products that I wanted to launch with, and it was just two different strengths of the CBD oil, a thousand milligram and a two thousand milligram. And the aim was to introduce the world to the first certified for sport CBD oil uh, or CBD products ever. Um, so yeah, that worked. But from the actual concept and idea to the launch, it was a good nine months. Um, and the reason, yeah. Yeah. By yourself as well. Yeah, and it's a pretty good go for a product that you don't really know anything about. Yeah. Which is yeah, and, and I think like at the time, um, the C B D space was there was it was quite well established in the US and it was quite it was very new. It was brand new in the UK. So I was fortunate that we had something going on over there in America that was, you know, pretty well ahead of the curve. So our first ever um, sourcing of raw ingredients from the farm, from the hemp farms and the manufacturing process all took place in America. And then the biggest sort of hurdle and stumbling was ensuring that the methods that they were using were the right methods in order to achieve the product to be of the specifications to achieve the um, certification for drug tested athletes. So that was the longest part of the process because they had to change their extraction methods, um, they had to change the way in which they were like formulating the products. Um, and yet, we, we went live with two products and it was the world's first to be certified for sport. And all I did was, I, I didn't know anything, I got a real simple and humble website made. It was just plain, it just said Pure Sport and they had the two products and like that was it. And I had an Instagram page and I just put it live and the, all the first customers were all my like fellow rugby players, like even, but like, weren't guys that I necessarily knew, but I think because of the like, network that I had that was naturally like close to home so then some players started buying it started talking about it um, putting it up on their stories and the timing was key because this was something new and kind of like exciting and it kind of had that slightly provocative element to it because CBD is from the cannabis plant you know cannabis is looked at as something that's like illegal in sport and in life and and now this was something that was legal and safe and allowed to be taken so it kind of had that like, oh, like mystery element to it and new and excitement. So naturally people that were buying it, which were like lots of professional athletes, they were like tagging stories. With, I never asked anyone to do any of that. They were just chucking up because it was exciting. And that's where it started to like build some momentum. And yeah, the first two years I was still, I, I played, carried on playing my rugby um, professionally. And I was just building up pure sport on the side. And I had a goal of like, I just wanted to try to build the business up to a level where I could make a salary so I could retire from rugby. So I just, I just wanted to make enough salary from it to be able to pay my bills, 
to then retire and then just give my everything to the business and that was two years in, that's what we managed to get to. First impression honestly was I saw just through social media, like it just came up on my explore, I, I saw a campaign that Batch had done and was in like a, a really beautiful setting in a house with some really cool looking models. And I just loved the aesthetic and I loved the look of the, the suits. And I was like, damn, like that's cool. Like how have I not heard of this before? And followed and I was like, oh, like it's real new. So that was my first impression. And then like my next impression was, my next impression went into realizing like the purpose behind the suits you know it was to inspire more sustainable shopping um, and that's something that really aligns to me and like it's something that I've kind of really valued and as my kind of mindset and perspective evolves and it's obviously something that's really aligned with pure sport around living more sustainably with our health and our supplementation and yeah like I mean definitely for me as I've grown up like I'm much more interested in pieces and items of clothing that I feel are timeless and the quality is timeless and the look is timeless. I'd much rather invest in something like that and pay more for it that I know I'm going to use for a long time. And I think like what I love about Batch is like, I've never been a dude who's had to wear suits in my life. Like, I mean, like through my career, you, you'd have like the odd thing where you'd have. So, so the, our range of products, um, so we started with the CBD oils uh, and they're amazing for you take them sublingually, they absorb into the glands under the tongue. They interact with the body's receptors um, and that's scientifically proven. They, they interact with the CB1 and CB2 receptors that play a really integral role in um, the central and peripheral nervous system. So amazing for like pain relief, focus, relaxation, sleep quality, uh, inflammation. So overall, that's like a really quite diverse offering, the, the CBD oil you can take during the day or, or at night. Um, and then we have our best selling products are our uh, freeze roll and our muscle and joint balm. These are both topical products. Uh, we're making like sort of big moves in the running world. People who, are, who love their running and love their active lifestyles really enjoy the pure sport products. So the freeze roll is a, is a roll on application. It's got a cooling effect. It's got the thousand milligrams of CBD. Again, it interacts with the receptors through the skin. Helps relieve pain, helps speed up recovery times, sort of ease um, tight muscles. And the balm does a very similar effect. And then we go into the amazing mushroom that we've got. Cordyceps mushroom, uh, scientifically proven to enhance endurance. So it helps deliver more oxygen to the muscles and increase VO2 max. So that's your ability to like, exert your um, oxygen levels for, for a prolonged period of time. Uh, so uh, again, unbelievable anyone that's running or exerting you know, uh, an, an endurance sport. Lion's mane, again, scientifically proven to help repair neural pathways in the brain. Uh, something quite fascinating is I think it's from the age of 28, uh, which was actually quite a scary number because it's pretty young, but all of our cognitive functions start to de degenerate from that age. And there's two things that are essential to prolong, um, you know, high performing um, brain function, and that is exercise and lion's mane. Uh, and lion's mane is proven to, yeah, repair those neural pathways to help fight off brain degeneration. Um, and then, yeah, like we've got a whole other range. We've got Unwind, which is a stack of nootropics, which is designed for sleep quality, helps deepen the different sleep cycles. So yeah, those are some of our, our products and those are the, some of the favorites. Yeah, now I've got to say, it's honestly been the most, like it's been the most rewarding and but challenging five years of my life. Um, and I don't say that lightly because, you know, I, I, do, I face some, pretty difficult times in my life. Uh, when I lost my dad, I, I went into a real spiral early in my career, got quite immersed in like alcohol and gambling and as a way to kind of like escape that, that pain and, and, I, and I ended up getting my, my contract torn up at the time. And so I have faced some challenges in my life. Um, but I don't know, like the just ongoing relentlessness of running a business, uh, especially one that like is truly from a place of passion, you know, for me it's, it's, it's so much more than business, you know, it's like there's, there's multiple elements of this, like, like this, is, this is an opportunity for me to truly express my passion and things that, that mean the most to me and I loved rugby, I really, really did, it was the game that, you know, gave me an opportunity in life, it was a game that allowed me to express myself um, 
and it was probably the only place as a kid growing up that I felt that I belonged, that I felt at home, because I surely didn't at school and I had a lot of issues at home. So rugby was something I loved, but, but as a pro rugby player, I did struggle because it's a quite a rigid environment, you know, and that it's not, it's not encouraged to be yourself and express yourself. It's quite like, this is how you should be, and this is how we do it. And I was always quite different, you know, I was always quite creative or, you know, expressive, or I'd question things, or I'd see things differently than the coaches would, and it didn't go down that well a lot of the time, so you've got to kind of learn to adhere in rugby. If you don't adhere, like, there's not really a place for you. Um, Whereas for me, pure sport is also like, this is a place where I feel at home. Like, I feel it's an environment that I can create that I want other people to feel at home that are in a team with me and like in our community with our running club and our ambassadors. And so it's so much more than a business. Um, but with that, you know, there comes scary things like, like, man, how are we going to keep this business alive? Like, are we, What's the financial elements? What's the strategy? What's the plan? And when you're a guy that's doing things from like love and passion, um, those aren't the ways in which you naturally think. So sometimes like those elements of running a business like really bog me down a lot. Um, but then, you know, I'm learning like, it's so important to have like people around you that you can trust that have the expertise that you don't. And yeah, like we're a young business, so we can't like go out and pay people all this money that have all the expertise. So we're kind of figuring it out a lot as we go. So there's a lot of unknown and a lot of mistakes and a lot of scary things. But yeah, man, like it's relentless, uh, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> yeah, so we just launched, we, we just had our most successful launch product ever, which is a, um, it's a product called Tonka Alley. It's also known as Nature's Testosterone. So it's a, it's a herb that has been discovered in Southeast Asia um, and it is again scientifically proven to help your body to release the optimal levels of testosterone and optimal levels of testosterone is unbelievable for your performance just as a human being so mood, energy, um, focus uh, but also when you're training um, it helps to like exert yourself more fully, it helps you to recover quickly. So optimal testosterone levels helps you to build more muscle mass, uh, increases strength. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an unbelievable product. That's one that we're so, so excited about. Because uh, it also comes with that kind of like reliving that initial like provocative, mysterious nature that CBD had when we first launched because people were lying something that boosts testosterone with like steroids, you know. Um, and you know, there's word, there's word out there that Tonka Alley is so performance enhancing that it could potentially one day be banned, which is crazy because like, why are you banning a natural substance that Mother Nature has given us, right? Like, it's a similar way that I look at like cannabis. It's like, why is that? Why are you guys making that illegal? Like, Mother Nature's given that up to us, and then you got things like alcohol, which yeah, I, I have no issue with alcohol when it's utilised in the right ways, but like, it's also can be be harmful, you know. But there's no one banning that, right? And so that that. There's all sorts of different kind of question marks and narratives that we should have around what's acceptable and what's not in society. Yeah, man, I, I love wearing a bat suit because like there's not been many times in my life that I've actually worn suits. So usually when I wear suits, it's around like all lots of other people are wearing suits like at a special function or something. So in my day to day life, I've never like been a suit wearer. So what I love is like when you're not being someone that like dressing up as a natural part of your life. Sometimes when you dress up, it feel, you feel like, oh, like, are people looking at me or am I overdressed? Or, whereas what I love about the bat suit is you can fit in and look so sharp in the like, you know, most dressy of environments. Or you could also just wander down the street on a Saturday morning to your local market in this bat suit and like feel like really comfortable. So for me, yeah, it's just like, it makes me feel like I can be smart and comfortable at the same time, you know, and then it's so easy to dress it up to, to kind of be at that, those smarter levels or dress it down and just love the versatility, love the comfort, love the like colour, I, I just love the colour of this one for example, it's got that washed effect, gives it that like vintage look, so yeah man, it's, it's one of the things I love most about Batch because it's, it's more than just a suit, it's more than just an item of clothing, it's, it's a symbol and it's a symbol that can inspire people to live a better life. You know, like I can honestly say, 
when you're trying to chase trends and chase the new shit all the time, your your brain is cluttered. And it's something that I, I've experienced, it's something that everyone, the way the world works now with all the information, all the marketing, all the advertising is jammed down our throats. You gotta really question like what you're doing and are you getting caught up in it? And we all can get caught up in it. So I think like for me, what I love about Batch is it's, it's a symbol, it's an opportunity to inspire people to be like, let's simplify life and let's live it more like purposefully. One piece of advice to Batch uh, from a founder who knows a thing or two about consumer products and branding, and what advice would you give to me? Yeah, my advice would just stay true to the vision. Like, like there's a true purpose behind why you guys are doing this, and that's your superpower. And you can't make that up. Like, you can't make up that you're passionate about that, and like, just utilize that passion. And there'll be so many hard times <laughs> running a, a startup, um, but just always fall back to that passion. And also, like, one of the things I learned is like, your business grows and people start to like take it more seriously. It's like you think then at times like, oh, what? how do I need to be perceived to be like this legit business? But, am I allowed to swear? Or... <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, my view is like, fuck that, man. Like, be yourself. There's enough copy and paste businesses out there. People don't want the copy and paste. Like, they want to connect to something that they feel aligned with and truly part of. And that comes down to you guys, like it comes down to why you're doing it and, and who it is that's sharing that message. And people will just resonate with that and you can't try be something else, just be yourself. And like, I get insecure all the time because like, I'm not a polished and refined speaker. Jeez. <laughs> you're probably one of the most eloquent people I've met, mate. Mate, that is, the com that is a compliment of a lifetime. I'll take that, I'll remember that next time I get insecure. Um, you know, like I, I think often I get insecure, I'm, I, I don't think I'm a polished, refined speaker, I don't have a degree, I don't have any other business experience, but I just keep falling back to like, life's short, like just be yourself and, like, and learn. There might be things you look back and be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or oh, I might do that differently. But just don't be hard on yourself, just, just express yourself and yeah, like keep that love, keep that passion, that's all I would say. Yeah, I remember when I had that thought, like, that I'm just, I'm just gonna give everything to become a professional rugby player. Um, I was, you know, I'd done well as a kid with my rugby, but I wasn't like a star player. I wasn't in any, like, academy or anything like that. Um, so I kind of was starting from scratch, and I went to my dad and to my brother, and I said, like, I wanna try to become a rugby player. Because they asked me, what are you gonna do after school? And I was like, that's what I want. And I think most parents would sort of be like, okay, but yeah, but you've got to go to uni or you've got to get a job and then try to do that. But my dad and my brother, they were just like, hey, like, we'll help you. What do you got to do? And um, I remember like, I needed to train and get bigger and stronger because I was a skinny kid. Um, and um, my, my dad bought us like this rusty old barbell with, um, you know, rusty weights on it. And I just remember, uh, me and my friends, you know, we'd be sitting in the lounge playing PlayStation, but in between we'd be just doing like these weights and we'd be cracking up because we kind of just had this rusty dumbbell and we'd just be doing like bicep curls and shoulders and like push-ups and we laughed because we, we were calling it like prison style workout. Um, like on the movies when you watch the dudes in jail and they just do these like real gritty prison style workouts and then that's where the phrase yard time came from. Um, and so me and my friends every day would be doing yard time and put on some size and some strength and I was also like going down the park every day like training like my fitness my speed my skills and I just loved it man but I was giving it a thousand percent and but it was from a place of just like love and um, for, for, for this game that, that I loved and yeah I, I remember when I got that contract um, yeah, that was like that was like a life life changing moment for me. It, it put me on a path that it gave me something. It showed me that you know, for the first time in my life, that if you put your mind to something and you truly go after it, like unbelievable things are possible. And I think before that, I, I didn't really think that I could do anything good. I'd never really achieved anything good. I don't think I'd even like ever passed the exam or anything. So. Yeah, that was that was a, a, the first time in my life that I was like, man, like we're 
humans are capable of anything if we put our mind to it. But I know it sounds cliche, but it's like where it's coming from within you. Like if you have conviction, then go after it, not from a place of like lack or insecurity, but from a place of like, this is just everything and this is, this is my life, this is what matters and yeah, you just do it. And yeah, that was, that was the start of a sort of new journey for me.